I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each episode, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Hi, everyone. We hope you're having a great week this week. As a follow-up to last week's Enneagram episode, we have a clever article for you from wellnesspetfood.com. How to choose a dog breed for these nine personality types. If you've ever heard a person say they like a particular type of dog, there could be a scientific reason behind it. Really? Really. You know, just like people, we all have different personality types, and sometimes some of those types are more compatible than others. And that's okay. That's how we're designed. The good news is, is that we can find a breed of dog that best suits our needs. And some of you may start thinking as we go through this list, well, the dog that I have doesn't match your list. That's okay. (laughs) If you love your dog, don't worry about it. (laughs) This is just a fun way for those of you who are looking for a, a new dog or considering picking out a new dog from the shelter or something like that. These are some things to take into consideration just to make everybody's life and environment more peaceful, I should say. So type one is the inquisitive, hardworking, orderly type. So your ideal dog will be confident and self-assured. Though possibly difficult to train at first, your ideal match will be respectful, reliable, and polite once trained. And some of the dogs that exemplify these qualities would be Japanese Chin, Tibetan Spaniel, a Boston Terrier, a Bull Terrier, or a Shih Tzu. And I would also add, I think a poodle can very easily fall into this category because they are very polite. My parents have a poodle and they have a poodle and a Jack Russell. (laughs) What a combination. (laughs) A, A large, you know, kind of standard poodle. And my mom, she loves them both dearly, but she makes comments about Lucy the poodle and just how, what a good dog she is. And I feel like my mom is a type one. Very inquisitive, very hardworking and orderly. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. Type one all the way. (laughs) Yes. So I think that's why the poodle pairs well with my mom. Number two is the giving helpful doer type. So if you're the first volunteer, you love to give back, you thrive on helping others. Some of the dogs that you might get along with are German Shepherds, Dutch Spaniard, Belgian Sheepdog, Bichon Frise. Oh, Vanza. I probably said that horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maltese, Havanese. These ideal dogs are loyal, obedient, hardworking, intelligent, gentle, fond of human interaction, and eager to please. Very good for a number two type. And type three, type threes are ambitious, social, and adaptable types. And so their ideal dog is adventurous, playful, active, and social. They have a a sense of curiosity, and they crave that activity and, and stimulation, mental stimulation. So dogs with these qualities would be beagles, English foxhounds, Brussels griffin. I don't know what that is. We should have looked these up before that we read this article. Is fancy. Or click that link. Let's click the Brussels Griffin link. That sounds like a name from somebody in the Harry Potter world. Uh, I'm looking at it, but I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it's a li- <laughs> <laughs> It's like a Benji, but with like an Ewok face for those of you that are Anywhere over 30 or even approaching 40s, you might get those references. Oh, oh, I think what this is, if you've seen that movie, As Good As It Gets. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's what this is. He has this little dog in that movie. And they got these little, <laughs> these little faces are so cute. Oh, my gosh. That's an Ewok face. Yes. That's a great way to describe an Ewok. Okay. So you might would like a Brussels Griffin if you are a type 3. If you're a type four, like me, you're individualistic, creative, original type, sometimes you feel like an outlier. You often feel unique. You're often very creative. Number four is often seen as the artist type. You definitely want a laid back, peaceful dog. 
<laughs> you chose. A dog that has like hippie running in his blood, you know, because that's just the way number fours are generally. A good match for you would be an Australian Shepherd, an English Bulldog, an Akita, a Border Collie, a miniature American Shepherd, or a Dutch Sheepdog. You definitely want one of these breeds that uh, knows how to mind its own business, but it's also hardworking and bright. Yeah. So so I would say knowing that we have Carson and Jack Russell, you perhaps did not choose so wisely because <laughs> he is anything but laid back. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. He has helped me learn patience. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think he fits more with my type, type five, intellectual, investigative, thoughtful types. Dog personalities that suit the type five, it can often be aloof and pensive, almost like a cat. They're smart and seemingly indifferent, but they enjoy intimate companionship with someone they trust. You must also enjoy a more energetic breed that is smart, self-sufficient, and happy. Some of these dog types might be a chow chow, a greyhound, a Tibetan mastiff, a Jack Russell, hey, there we go, a Jack Russell, a rat terrier, a Parson Russell terrier. They've got about five different terrier types here. And I think that <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And I know I mentioned during the Enneagram episode was that I that's why I chose a Jack Russell, or I think I'm drawn to a Jack Russell is how intelligent they are and how their minds are constantly working. Number six is the loyal, trusting, security-oriented type. So if you are a faithful friend who believes in virtue and goodness, you work well with others and you're happy to do your part in group projects, maybe you would be drawn to a Siberian Husky or a Pug or a Greyhound or a Chinook. One of those dogs, you know, they're very good natured, dependable, loyal, outgoing, and curious. Yep. And number seven is an enthusiastic, curious, adventurous type. So if you find that you are a type seven, your ideal dog is playful, affectionate, smart, happy, and curious. Dogs with these qualities would include a dachshund, Pomeranian, corgis, or even a Teddy Roosevelt Terrier. I think uh, Jack Russell would go well with a seven. Oh, it? absolutely. Terriers in general. If you're a type eight, the challenging, truth-seeking leader type, you're quick to take up a cause uh, when you detect injustice. You're not afraid to lead a pack of people. You're passionate, hardworking, and you rely on your own resources. So you definitely want a dog that matches that kind of personality, that drivenness. Uh, you definitely want a charismatic, confident, intelligent, strong-willed dog, a born leader just like you. So maybe a Tibetan Mastiff, a Tibetan Terrier, Tibetan Spaniel. A lot of confidence coming out of Tibet. Wow. <laughs> a Maltese, a Mastiff, Labrador Retriever. Those are all good dogs for eights. On the other side of that coin, we have the type nine, peaceful, easygoing, non-confrontational types. So if you find that best describes you, your best dog match would be a dog that is loving and loyal, passionate, charismatic, social, and is attuned to people's needs and emotions. Dogs with these qualities are Golden Retriever, Cocker Spaniel, Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. That's the one to look out. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? A Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. <laughs> Lots of retrievers, right? They're, mm. they're willing to retrieve things for you and keep the peace in their house. And of course, if you get a dog that's a mix of, of a couple of these different types, it might work out even better for your family because they bring a combination of traits to the table. The article wraps up perfectly by saying, by getting a dog with a personality that goes paw in hand with your personality, you ensure that you two will have nothing but loving good times. Aww. Thanks for listening to this bonus episode. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Carson, say bye-bye. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. 
Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.